How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brad, the DC Universe Geek. For those of you who may not know, and today I wanted to present to you every single one of my Mattel-based body buck custom Batman action figures. I'm certainly not the greatest at what I do, but I'm absolutely proud of my work, and I'd love to share it with you. If it can be some kind of an inspiration for you to do custom figures, that's all that matters. This first one's been done on a Batman Bat Signal Batman action figure with the pouches being added from another belt. The gloves are from a Batman Long Halloween. The head sculpt and cape are from a DC Superhero Select Sculpt Batman. This is just a basic custom zipline Batman. I took the cape off of an unmasked Batman. I believe that it was a SDCC exclusive or something like that. And then the same thing with the belt and put them all together. And I just wanted to have a Batman that did not have a cloth cape from this line of figures. This one's made on another Mattel body buck. I've painted the boots and the gloves and his trunks black. DC Direct Superman Batman, I believe, Series 7 belt. Head sculpt is from a DC Icons Rebirth Batman, and the cape is from a New 52 Mattel Batman. Select Sculpt Batman, only with the gloves replaced with the black and gray Select Sculpt. Boots have been painted, though, because they used to be blue. The cape is from a DC Direct Batman Incorporated. The head is from a Commissioner Gordon Batman, and the belt is also from Batman Incorporated. I love the way that the cape from the Batman Incorporated figure sits over the shoulders. If you're gonna go not cloth cape, in my opinion, this is the way to go right here. We got a Mattel Batman body buck. It's actually the second time that this was used in black and gray. It's got a repainted Multiverse New 52 cape and a repainted DC Essentials Batman head sculpt. Everything else is pretty much factory. Here we have one of my favorite customs. Body buck is DC Universe Classics. Head sculpt is DC Direct Unmasked Batman. Cape is from the Batman Incorporated. And the pouch belt there is actually from the DC Direct JLA Ed McGuinness Batman figure, the blue and gray one. This was actually one of my very first Jim Lee custom Batman figures and I really like the way this one turned out. Here's my second attempt at a DC Universe Classic scale Jim Lee Batman. Its foundation is a Mattel Batman Legacy Line Golden Age Batman figure. Pouch belt is from a select sculpt DC Superheroes Batman. I actually had to change the arms below the elbows as well to make them match because the gloves are black and I didn't want to paint them. And the head again is from a Secret Files Unmasked Batman. Here's my third attempt at a black and gray Jim Lee Batman action figure. The body buck is just a basic DC Universe Classics. The belt is the DC Superheroes Car Carpenter Batman belt. Head sculpt is from the DC Direct Unmasked Batman. Neck piece is from a Mattel Tech Armor Batman. And the custom cape is actually from a Mezco Dark Knight Returns. And then our final Batman custom in the line of Solid Bat, gray and black with the pouch belt Batman custom figures. This one's actually almost completely just a DC Superheroes Batman that I've popped the head off of and popped another Jim Lee head sculpt on there. But this one actually, the skin tone for the bottom of his face is actually molded in that color plastic. And I, I kind of like that look, so I wanted to take one more crack at doing it. And I tell you, again, I like the overall look of this figure. And that about covers it for this style of Batman. Now let's move on to blue and gray Batman. These can have pouch belts or capsules. Now, before we get into the realm of the blue and gray, I figured I would bridge it with a black and gray that has an oval bat on the chest, a capsule belt, and a nice billowy cape and long bat ear horns. The head is from an Arkham City Batman figure. The same thing with the cape. They're both from the same figure. I just painted the eyes. And the belt is from a DC Direct Killing Joke Batman. Up next is what my interpretation of what a material Killing Joke Batman could have looked like. Obviously the head and the cape are from the DC Direct Killing Joke, but to get that shade of blue without having to paint it meant combining the body from a Mattel Public Enemies Batman and just a regular Batman from Wave 1. And yes, even though I do tend to prefer a cloth goods cape nowadays, I could not let this one go to waste. It's such a fantastically sculpted Batman cape. Next we have what I would consider to be a mid-90s Batman where he had the pouch belt, but he also still had the oval on his chest. He hadn't yet transitioned to a solid bat. In my opinion, this is a good look for Batman and it would have been a great look for Mattel to attempt themselves. Here we are with another classic Batman figure that I kind of wish Mattel had him made, and that's got the capsules in the oval, as you can see, with a nice bright blue and a not-too-dark gray. The closest we got to that was the base body this comes from, which was the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Batman figure that was made to go with the early 2000s Batman action figure line. But they didn't quite hit the mark for me, so I decided to try my hand at it, and this is actually one of my first custom figures that I ever made. The belt has been swapped in and out here and there, but the belt currently is a DC Universe Classics capsule belt, and I think that that is probably going to stay that way. And the cape is from a DC Superheroes Wave 1 Batman figure, and yeah, I think that this worked out really well, and I don't think I'll be doing any more work on it, and I again, I kind of wish that Mattel had it delivered on something like this, because they had all the parts to do it, they just never did it. 
Next we have a Batman figure that I designed so that it would look classic sitting next to a Superman figure that also was made to look like it could have jumped right out of the 50s. And I think that with this one, I think that it looks really fantastic and yet simple. Anyone can do this one. You just take the body from a Golden Age Legacy line Batman figure. The belt comes from the same line of figures except for it's from the modern. And the head comes from a DC Direct reactivated Batman figure. Here we have my attempt at creating a dark but jovial looking lighter blue but darker gray solid bat pouch belt Batman. I've included him in this lineup simply because I've gone with the blue here. I'm aware that this isn't really accurate. Usually the gray was lighter or the blue was darker. I just, I think that regardless of whether he actually wore it, this actually pops and looks fantastic. Obviously, it's got a cloth goods cape. The neck piece is from a DC Superhero Select Sculpt Batman that's been repainted. The pouch belt is from a Public Enemies Batman, and the head sculpt is from a DC reactivated Jim Lee style Batman. The top of the body buck itself is also from a Select Sculpt S3, while the arms from the biceps down and the rest of the body from the waist down is from a Series 1 Batman. Next, we have another Batman built on that DC Superheroes buck, except for this is the one that was released the second time as the modern Batman. I've simply painted the gloves and crotch and boots all blue. The neck piece I cut off of an Arkham City Batman, and the head sculpt is from a Batman Incorporated. And of course, as you can see, it's got a cloth cape. I would like to point out as well that we're getting into a bunch of figures where the blue actually looks shiny. I really don't like it that shiny, but I've got two different kinds of spray-on matte coating, and both of the kinds of coating that I use actually cause the blue to bubble up. It's weird. Seriously, check this out. I gotta repaint this completely. The blue just looks really weird now. And this is what it did look like, and it turned it into this, and it made the yellow and the red run. Yuck. Here we have a Batman that I've made using the Dick Bat head sculpt, but I've gave him a pouch belt and I've painted all the blue parts nice and light blue. That's because I wanted him to look like the Batman as he appears on a lot of that promo art that you see on gift bags and wrapping paper. When you paint up that head sculpt, you actually get a really nice classic looking Batman face. And look, he's smirking. Which means this Batman actually looks really great next to figures like his old chum Robin in the classic Robin costume. Next up we have two Batman figures that I took my inspiration from Neil Adams, Dick Gordiano, and Jim Apero's artwork. Between the 70s and the 80s, he was depicted as being in a gray as dark as this, or even as light as the other one. Now if you want to try your hands at this Batman, the recipe for this one is a DC Universe Classics Gotham City 5-pack Batman. Because this Batman originally came in black and gray, I boil and popped off the arms from the bicep swivel down, and replaced them with Batman Legacy Line Golden Age Batman arms. The utility belt, along with the rest of the lower half of his body, actually comes from a Mattel Golden Age Batman as well, with the trunks being painted blue, a head sculpt from the DC Universe Classics only having used acetone to remove most of the black, leaving black around the eyes because I think it looks cool. And then the cape for this one actually comes from a Mattel Arkham City Batman. And with this one, even though I'm usually a cloth cape guy now, I really do like the look of this one. I think it does a great job of giving this Batman figure that 70s feel, that Jim Aparo, that Neil Adams look. I really, really like this one. While this Batman is just your basic DC Universe classics, only I've popped off the arms from the bicep down from an S3 Select Sculpt DC Superheroes Batman. I've painted the blue gloves a brighter blue. I've taken the belt from a DC Direct Batman, and the lower half of his body as well is also from a DC Superheroes Batman. And yes, I purposely left the soles of his boots darker. I thought that that would look kind of cool. I know that it's not completely accurate because none of the artists that I've mentioned actually put the details like that into the gloves and the boots. I just thought it looked really cool. And as for this Batman's custom cape, I did this one a little bit different. I didn't have any more neck pieces, so I decided to do a custom cape in the style where you put it all the way around his body and then you just sew it up there at the neck and stuff it under the head sculpt. And I think that it actually works out really well. I probably should have used maybe a thinner fabric so it would work out even better, but I think so far, that's a pretty good result. What do you think? And that about wraps up this segment of Batman figures. Most of them, as you can see, are blue and gray. Some have ovals, some have solid bats, some have pouches, some have capsules. I figured that all these figures somehow work best together in this segment of the video, and they wouldn't have fit as well with the next one that's coming, which is... Two New 52 Batmans. Let's start with the one on the left. For this one, I actually used the cape and the belt of a Greg Capullo New 52 Batman and the head sculpt from a Batman DC Direct 10-year anniversary figure. That's really it. That's, that's all I did. Swap the cape, the head, and the belt. 
I just really like the overall shiny look of this body buck to begin with. I thought that it looked really cool. And for my other one, I actually pilfered the gauntlets off of the Greg Capullo DC Collect Designer Series Batman. Same thing with the belt, but the head sculpt for this one comes from a DC Collectibles New 52 Batman, one of the ones with the matte finish. Next we have two different takes on the Dark Knight Returns, let's look at the one on the right first. This one was a little bit tricky to do because I had to replace the arms from the forearms down from a DC Direct 10 year anniversary. The head, cape, and the belt, which I had to cut and dremel off of the body, are both from a DC Direct version of the Dark Knight Returns. Although this one was a real big pain in the butt to put together, I can say that I'm definitely satisfied with the results. Admittedly, this one here took a whole lot less work, having the head and the gloves come from the Mezco 112th Collective version of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns Batman. Here we have my customized version of a first appearance Batman. I never did like this rendition of Mattel's figure, and if anyone was begging to be customized, it was this one. The gloves come from a Greg Capullo Batman Designer Series Zero Year figure. The non-cloth portion of this Batman's cape comes from a Mattel New 52 Batman. The head comes from a DC Direct. And the wired cape actually comes from a DC Direct first appearance Batman. I just had to use this cape. It's the only one that is accurate. And I love it. And I keep it like this all the time. Like it's blowing in the wind. <sighs> only it has wires, so it, it's not blowing in the wind. Next I've got kinda sort of a New 52 Batman. It wasn't really intended to be a New 52 Batman even though it's made on that buck and the only part that's not New 52 is the belt. That's a Mezco 112th Collective Ascending Knight. I just thought it'd be fun to put this big belt on there and then paint him silver. So he's actually silver and black. It might be coming up white or a light gray but this is silver paint. I think he looks good. Next I've got one that kind of comes out of left field, bet you weren't expecting to see this. It's a Total Heroes custom Batman figure. Cape is from the Mattel Rebirth, head is from a Greg Capullo Zero Year, and the belt is from a DC Collectibles animated Batman. Not really going for anything in particular here, I just thought that all these parts looked nice together on this figure, and so I thought I would go for it. What do you think? I think that it looks pretty good. Next we have one that's a work in progress and I'm not quite satisfied with yet, but I figured I would pop it in the video. It's made on the Multiverse Dick Grayson Batman buck. I took the belt from a Total Heroes Batman. The gauntlets are from the Toy Biz Throwback 89 Batman. And I actually had to cut off his arms below the elbows and dremel out the gauntlets a little bit and then heat them up and super glue them and, and fit them over top of his arms like that. The torso is from Dick Bats. However, the arms from the bicep down are not. They're from a DC Universe Classics. While the boots are from a Greg Capullo Designer Series. I had to dremel out the inside of the boots and cut off his feet too to make them fit. As for the cape, when you have it all the way down and you have this long ear slash horned head on the body, it kind of has a really classic look to it, but as soon as you open up, he just looks kind of skinny. I don't know, it just doesn't look right. And I blame that mostly on the body buck. However, how I put the cape on this one, you can see, you could just pop this right off like that, and that is what you're left with. I just pop the cape over top of the peg like that, Stick the neck piece back on top. You can see some sticky tack there. Yeah, it's drilled out, but the hole is just a little bit too big. Pop the head on like that. As for whether I'm gonna keep this one like this, I'm not quite sure yet. It's still a work in progress. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Stay tuned to my Instagram for more details. Now the next section is films, and the first one I wanted to show you is my customized version of the Toy Biz throwback Michael Keaton Batman. Now I'm aware that the head sculpt on this one doesn't look anything like Michael Keaton, however I certainly think it looks way better than the one that came on the body. And I think it kind of goes with the really Toy Biz-ish look they're going for, so I'm going to keep this one on here. This head's actually from a Total Heroes Batman. Other than that all I did was pop off the neck piece and then give him a nice custom billowy Batman cape. And that's it, Bob's your uncle, Susan's your aunt, you have a custom Toy Biz Batman. Next we have two versions of the figure everyone seems to love to hate, the Mattel Signature Collection Val Kilmer Batman Forever figure. I don't know, I think these guys get a really bad name, but I really don't think they're terrible figures. I think that Mattel certainly had some missteps with these, and there were things they could have done better, like the cape that they came with stank, the face paint on these is hit and miss. But on the plus side, these figures had all the articulation that fans have been asking Mattel to give us, with double jointed knees and elbows, and hinges in the wrists, and the neck, and the toes. So once you replace the capes on these guys, I don't think they look that bad. And finally, I have two very simple customized versions of the Ben Affleck Batman figure from Batman v Superman. This one has a Mezco 112th collective head, while this one has the SH Figuarts head sculpt. 
Even though we all know these figures aren't perfect, when you replace the head sculpts on these guys, I certainly think they look a whole lot better. Anyway, super friends, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This has been my complete and total customized on Mattel Body Bucks action figure video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you're inspired. And show me on Instagram. Tag me on what you create. Until then, have a super day, everybody. Take care.